Remember the time when you nestled in your cozy living room, watched the TV show with all the actors who've become part of our lives? Seeing them now is like meeting an old friend, someone you laughed with, cried with, and shared unforgettable moments with. But what if I told you that sometimes those friends slip away without a proper goodbye, leaving us with a heartache we didn't even see coming? While you might not recognize all these actors by name, you've likely encountered their faces, and their work has left a lasting impact on you. Many of your cherished films or TV shows have featured actors who departed from this world far too early. With this in mind, we take a moment to honor these tragically brief legacies, shedding light on some of the many celebrities who left us too soon, often without receiving the proper farewell from the public. Sage Stallone Rocky V may have been critically maligned and struggled at the box office, but beneath its cheesy elements, it contained the outline of a touching story about a former heavyweight champion facing financial troubles, loss of boxing ability, and strained relationships. Sylvester Stallone, the franchise's star and creator, added a personal touch to the film by casting his own 14-year-old son, Sage Stallone, in the role of Robert Rocky Jr. Balboa. Sage Stallone's involvement in the movie left a positive mark, and he continued to work in the film industry after college, pursuing his own career separate from his famous father. Tragically, Sage Stallone's life was cut short when he passed away at the age of 36 on July 13, 2012, due to a heart attack caused by coronary artery disease. His untimely death was a loss both to his family and the film industry. Brittany Murphy Brittany Murphy, celebrated for her breakthrough role in Clueless and acclaimed performances in films such as Girl Interrupted, 8 Mile, and Sin City, possessed a career brimming with promise. Yet, her life was fraught with personal challenges as she dedicated herself to caring for her mother, a breast cancer survivor, and her husband, Simon Monjack, who grappled with health issues. Tragically, Brittany Murphy's life was abruptly truncated, leaving her burgeoning career tragically unfulfilled. Her passing on December 20th, 2009 was shrouded in suspicion, primarily due to the presence of pneumonia, anemia, and evidence of multiple drug intoxication. Furthermore, concerns arose regarding toxic mold in her residence and, shockingly, her husband, Simon Monjack, was discovered deceased in the same house merely five months later. The circumstances surrounding her untimely demise continue to be the subject of intrigue and speculation. Brittany Murphy was a mere 32 years old at the time of her passing. Lou Albano and Danny Wells In the late 1980s and early 1990s, Captain Lou Albano and Danny Wells brought to life the beloved characters of Mario and Luigi in the live-action segments of the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, delighting both children and dedicated fans. The show centered around two actors portraying the iconic plumbers in their Brooklyn home, often joined by celebrity guests. The live-action scenes seamlessly transitioned into animated adventures from Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda, with Albano and Wells lending their voices to the animated versions of Mario and Luigi. Lou Albano's illustrious career extended far beyond the small screen. He was a wrestling legend with a career spanning more than four decades, commencing in 1953 and concluding in 1995. His remarkable contributions to the wrestling world earned him a well-deserved induction into the WWE Hall of Fame in 1996. Sadly, on October 14, 2009, at the age of 76, Albano passed away following a heart attack. His influence on the world of wrestling also inspired his grandnephew, Phil Baroni, who ventured into MMA and professional wrestling. Danny Wells, the talented actor behind Luigi, enjoyed a successful television career. He made memorable guest appearances on popular shows like The Jeffersons, Happy Days, Punky Brewster, Chips, The A-Team, Sanford and & Son, and Starsky and & Hutch. 
Additionally, Wells lent his voice to the animated series such as Heathcliff and Batman the Animated Series. Sadly, he passed away on November 28, 2013, with the cause undisclosed. Earl Hindman Earl Hindman maintained a steady and productive career in the entertainment industry, even though he didn't achieve widespread fame. He made appearances in notable films like Silverado and The Taking of Pelham 1 2 3. However, his most enduring presence in the 70s and 80s was on the long running ABC daytime drama series Ryan's Hope where he portrayed Bob Reed in over 450 episodes, a testament to his reliability and the dramatic depth of his performances. Yet it was another supporting role on a beloved long-lasting series that truly cemented Hinman's legacy. Many 90s kids fondly remember him as Wilson, the enigmatic yet friendly neighbor of Tim the Toolman Taylor on the popular sitcom Home Improvement. Hinman's portrayal of the neighbor over the backyard fence left an indelible mark on a generation, as he always had sage advice and shared intriguing hobbies. Tragically, Earl Hinman passed away at the age of 61 on December 29, 2003, succumbing to lung cancer. His portrayal of Wilson continues to be cherished by viewers who grew up with the show. Dana Plato Dana Plato rose to fame through her role as Kimberly Drummond in the immensely popular TV series Different Strokes. Alongside fellow child stars Gary Coleman and Todd Bridges, she became an instant celebrity. The pressures of fame led Plato to turn to cocaine and marijuana offset, which eventually led to her downfall. Her contract was terminated by the network when she became pregnant, setting off a chain of events that included struggles with drug and alcohol addiction, roles in adult films, and a feature in Playboy magazine. While her fellow Different Strokes cast members faced their own post-show challenges, Plato's life took a darker turn. She relocated to Las Vegas, where financial desperation drove her to commit a robbery for less than $200. She was bailed out of jail by entertainer Wayne Newton. Tragically, at the age of 34, Dana Plato passed away on May 8th, 1999, in her RV in Oklahoma, after consuming a lethal combination of Lortab and Valium. Her life story serves as a poignant reminder of the struggles that can accompany child stardom. Brad Renfro Brad Renfro's meteoric rise to fame began at the tender age of 11 with his critically acclaimed performance in Joel Schumacher's adaptation of John Grisham's The Client. This breakthrough led to high-profile roles in films such as Sleepers, where he starred alongside Brad Pitt, Ghost World, alongside Scarlett Johansson, and The Informers, featuring Kim Basinger. However, as Renfro's star continued to shine on the silver screen, he battled a darker reality behind the scenes. Sadly, he followed a path all too common for child actors, descending into a life marred by illegal drug use and encounters with the law. Renfro faced legal consequences, including a no-contest plea for attempted possession of heroin, which stemmed from an attempt to purchase drugs from an undercover Los Angeles police officer. He served a 10-day jail sentence for this offense. Tragically, on January 15, 2008, at the age of 25, Brad Renfro's tumultuous journey took a devastating turn as he was found dead in his Los Angeles apartment. His passing was attributed to an accidental overdose involving heroin and morphine. Bernie Mac One of the original kings of comedy alongside Cedric the Entertainer, D.L. Hewley, and Steve Harvey carved out a highly successful career with stand-up routine deeply influenced by the legendary Richard Pryor. While many comedians drew inspiration from Pryor, Mack used it as a foundation to develop a distinct style and presence that was uniquely his own. His relentless dedication to his craft paid off in Hollywood, leading to a series of prominent roles. Bernie Mac became known to audiences as Pastor Cleaver, Ice Cube's neighbor in the movie Friday. He went on to star in other notable films like Charlie's Angels, Full Throttle, Ocean's Eleven, Transformers, and more. 
Additionally, he headlined his own sitcom, The Bernie Mac Show, which loosely mirrored his personal experiences. However, during the latter years of his life, Mac battled sarcoidosis, a condition that severely affected his lungs. Tragically, he succumbed to complications from pneumonia on August 9, 2008, at the age of 50. Richard Bonehill He may not be a household name, but his contributions to iconic films like Star Wars have left an indelible mark on cinematic history, especially for fans of the franchise. Bonehill's background as a competitive fencer and swordsmanship coach granted him a unique advantage in Hollywood, leading to roles in notable productions like Highlander, Flash Gordon, and Doctor Who. However, it was his involvement in The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi that solidified his place in cinematic lore. Although many of Bonehill's roles were in the background, including appearances as stormtroopers and Rebel Alliance soldiers, one character he portrayed became particularly memorable. He is best remembered as Neen Numb, Lando Calrissian's alien co-pilot aboard the Millennium Falcon during the assault on the second Death Star in Return of the Jedi. Bonehill's contributions to the Star Wars universe and other beloved films continue to be celebrated by fans. Tragically, Bonehill passed away on February 4, 2015, at the age of 67, leaving behind a legacy that will forever be a part of cinematic history. Heather O'Rourke Heather O'Rourke, renowned for her portrayal of Carol Ann in the film Poltergeist, achieved instant stardom as the young girl whose terrifying journey through the television captivated audiences. O'Rourke's remarkable performance in the film contributed to her fame, yet it also came with challenges. Despite her initial success, O'Rourke struggled to break free from her association with the Poltergeist franchise, which continued to define her public image. She remained a part of the series until its conclusion with Poltergeist 3 in 1988. During her later years, viewers may have noticed changes in O'Rourke's appearance, particularly puffy cheeks. This transformation was a result of a medication she was taking for Crohn's disease, a condition that had been initially misdiagnosed. Tragically, on February 1, 1988, Heather O'Rourke experienced cardiac arrest while undergoing surgery for a bowel obstruction, passing away at the tender age of 12. Richard Attenborough Richard was a multifaceted talent, recognized for his remarkable contributions to both acting and filmmaking. Before embarking on his venture into Dino DNA-themed amusement parks in Jurassic Park, Attenborough had already established himself as an accomplished and award-winning actor. His role alongside Steve McQueen in The Great Escape was a standout moment in a busy period of his career, marked by some of his most widely acclaimed work. He secured two consecutive Golden Globe Awards in 1967 and 1968 for his co-starring roles in the Sand Pebbles, also with McQueen, and Dr. Doolittle. Attenborough's career was filled with numerous highlights, making him a beloved figure among classic film enthusiasts. For a younger generation of filmgoers, he's remembered as John Hammond, the visionary behind Jurassic Park. This blockbuster introduced him to a new audience, but his legacy extends far beyond this iconic role. Richard Attenborough's life was filled with cinematic achievements, both in front of and behind the camera. He left an indelible mark on the world of film. His passing on August 24, 2014, at the age of 90, marked the end of an era, but his contributions continue to be celebrated and remembered. Harold Ramis Harold Ramis is a beloved figure in the world of film and comedy. His passing at the age of 69 in 2014 due to an autoimmune disease came as a surprise to many fans who fondly remembered him from 80s classics like Stripes, National Lampoon's Vacation, and Ghostbusters. Ramis was not just a talented actor, but also a gifted director and screenwriter, making significant contributions to the entertainment industry. Ramis's creative talents extended beyond acting, and he played a pivotal role in bringing us comedy gems like Groundhog Day and Caddyshack. 
He seamlessly transitioned between writing, directing, and acting, showcasing his versatile skills. He co-wrote both Ghostbusters movies and Stripes, demonstrating his prowess both in front of and behind the camera. While many of his fans were unaware of his illness, Ramis battled the side effects of his condition for years. He faced the challenges of autoimmune inflammatory vasculitis, which he contracted in 2010, and had to undergo a difficult process of relearning how to walk. Despite his health struggles, he continued to work in the industry, with his final on-screen appearance in the 2009 comedy, Year One. Dominique Dunn The 1982 film, Poltergeist, achieved tremendous success as a horror hit and initiated a franchise. However, behind the scenes, a series of troubling accidents involving the cast gave rise to talk of a curse associated with the film. Heather O'Rourke, a young star of the film, tragically passed away in 1988 at the age of 12. Her promising career and life were cut short, leaving a sense of sorrow and tragedy among those who knew her. Another actor from Poltergeist, Dominique Dunn, faced an untimely demise as well. Born into a privileged life in Santa Monica, Dunn had a promising start in Hollywood, with early credits in TV shows like Chips, Fame, and The Quest. While Poltergeist held the potential to be her breakthrough role, her life took a tragic turn. In the same year the film was released, Dunn's deranged ex-boyfriend, John Thomas Sweeney, brutally murdered her in her own driveway in West Hollywood on November 4, 1982. These heartbreaking events surrounding the cast of Poltergeist contributed to the perception of a curse associated with the film, casting a shadow over the production and its participants. Lee Thompson Young A young star began to rise with his role in The Famous Jet Jackson, a popular show on the Disney Channel. During his time on the show, he had the opportunity to work alongside Rachel McAdams, who was also on her way to stardom. Like many aspiring talents associated with Disney, the famous Jet Jackson provided Young with a platform to launch into other projects, including films like Friday Night Lights, Aquila and the Bee, and The Hills Have Eyes Too. His brief yet impressive career showed great promise. Tragically, Lee Thompson Young's career was abruptly cut short. While working as a series regular on Rizzoli and Isles, he received a diagnosis of bipolar disorder. He, like many others dealing with this condition, faced the challenges it presented. On August 19, 2013, his life ended tragically when he took his own life with a self-inflicted gunshot wound leaving behind a legacy of potential and talent. Michael Clark Duncan Michael Clark Duncan, a man whose sheer physical presence made him a natural fit for big guy roles, possessed a talent that went far beyond his imposing exterior. Behind that commanding gaze lay a wellspring of dramatic ability, and unlike many actors typecast into roles defined by physicality, Duncan had the opportunity to showcase his dramatic versatility on numerous occasions, and he seized each one with remarkable skill. Duncan's filmography, though tragically cut short, is a testament to his diverse talents. He effortlessly shifted between roles, leaving an indelible mark in each one. Whether it was his memorable supporting performances in blockbusters like Armageddon and Daredevil, or his profoundly moving leading role in the cinematic adaptation of Stephen King's The Green Mile, Duncan consistently demonstrated his range as an actor. While he initially appeared destined for a career characterized by character actor roles, his Oscar-nominated performance in The Green Mile shattered those expectations, revealing his potential for leading roles. Duncan seemed poised for a long and illustrious career, filled with box office triumphs and critical acclaim. However, fate had a different plan. In 2012, at the age of 54, he suffered a heart attack, leaving behind a legacy of exceptional performances that continue to captivate audiences. Gary Coleman Gary Coleman, famous for coining the catchphrase, What you talking about, Willis? On the classic sitcom, 
Different Strokes, was a beloved figure among kids of the 70s and 80s, as well as fans of timeless sitcoms from that era. Coleman's distinctive, diminutive stature allowed him to portray younger characters throughout his career. At the height of his fame, he secured various roles in both film and television. However, his youthful appearance and short stature, standing at 4 feet 8 inches, were the result of an autoimmune kidney disease and lifelong medication use to manage it. His health struggles included frequent dialysis treatments and two kidney transplants. Unfortunately, Gary Coleman's Hollywood opportunities waned after different strokes concluded. Tragically, he sustained a fall at his home and passed away on May 28, 2010, at the age of 42, due to an epidural hematoma. Sky McColl Bartusiak Sky McColl Bartusiak, best known for her role as Mel Gibson's daughter in the blockbuster film The Patriot, was a child actor with a promising future in the entertainment industry. Her career began with her film debut in The Cider House Rules in 1999, and she went on to star alongside Michael Douglas and Brittany Murphy in Don't Say a Word in 2001. Bartusiak also appeared in the film Kill Your Darlings with Alexander Skarsgård in 2006. Behind the scenes, however, Bartusiak's life was not as glamorous as it appeared. Tragically, she struggled with dangerous habits that ultimately contributed to her untimely death. In 2014, she accidentally overdosed on a combination of drugs including hydrocodone, the refrigerant, difluoroethane, and the muscle relaxer, carisoprodol. Additionally, Bartusiak had been dealing with epileptic seizures prior to her passing, leading her family to initially believe she had choked to death before the coroner's ruling revealed the true cause of her demise. Jonathan Brandis Jonathan Brandis rapidly built a lengthy resume in the entertainment industry long before most people figured out their career paths. He appeared in numerous TV shows including Who's the Boss, Blossom, L.A. Law, Full House, The Wonder Years, and Murder, She Wrote, among many others. Throughout his childhood and teenage years, it seemed like he had an abundance of acting opportunities. He was just 16 when he starred in Ladybugs, and 17 when he played a teen genius in Steven Spielberg's Sequest 2032. However, when Sequest was canceled in 1996, Brandis experienced a significant decline in casting offers. Like many former child actors, he faced the challenges of depression and struggled to navigate a new career path. Unfortunately, Brandis's personal battles took a toll on him, and he tragically passed away at the age of 27 in Los Angeles, California, following injuries from an attempted suicide by hanging. Taylor Negron Taylor Negron was one of those quintessential that-guy actors in Hollywood, amassing an impressive list of classic screen credits without ever achieving household name status. Despite often only having brief moments on screen, Negron's deadpan delivery endeared him to film aficionados of the 80s, and he became a favorite in movies like Fast Times at Ridgemont High and Better Off Dead. Later in his career, Negron made memorable appearances on popular TV shows like Seinfeld and Friends. Beyond his acting career, he was also a talented writer, with published collections of short stories to his name. Additionally, he was a skilled painter, and his artwork was exhibited in multiple galleries. Tragically, Negron's life was cut short at age 57 when he succumbed to liver cancer in early 2015. Despite not achieving widespread fame, he left a lasting impact on the entertainment industry and is fondly remembered by those who appreciated his unique talent. Lisa Robin Kelly Lisa Robin Kelly, a name that once brought laughter to audiences as part of That 70s Show ensemble cast, but behind the scenes, her life was a tragic tale. Her battle with the relentless forces of drug and alcohol addiction was no secret. The struggle played out in the public eye during her time on the show, casting a shadow over what should have been a bright career and setting the stage for a somber final act of her tragically short life. 
Through the years, she fought valiantly against the grip of substance abuse, seeking sobriety through various attempts. But it was in August of 2013 that she made a critical decision to check into rehab, a last-ditch effort to regain control over her life. Sadly, the hands of fate were not on her side. As she took that courageous step towards recovery, little did she know it was too late. The disease had already taken its toll. Lisa Robin Kelly, at the tender age of 43, passed away peacefully in her sleep, a victim of the unforgiving clutches of an accidental overdose. James Avery James Avery, affectionately known as the Big Guy or Uncle Phil, etched his name into the hearts of households across the nation with his unforgettable portrayal of Philip Banks on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. But long before gracing the screens of this iconic sitcom, this robust actor had left his mark in the world of television, often through his distinctive voice. Avery lent his deep and resonant voice to numerous memorable characters. He became the menacing Shredder in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the heroic War Machine in Iron Man. Beyond that, his vocal talents resonated in projects like The Prince of Egypt, Extreme Ghostbusters, Fist of the North Star, and Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. His voice, a distinctive and authoritative presence, breathed life into these animated worlds. Despite gaining fame for playing Uncle Phil, a character whose name might suggest otherwise, Avery was in reality a fatherly figure to many. His sudden passing, the result of complications following heart surgery, cast a shadow over the hearts of a generation of viewers. On December 31, 2013, at the age of 68, he left a void that could never truly be filled. In his own humble words, he once said, You can either be a movie star or an actor. I'm an actor. And indeed, he was a remarkable actor who achieved great success. James Avery had indeed done pretty good. Dana Hill Dana Hill, a talent with dreams of becoming a track star, saw her athletic aspirations dashed by the onset of type 1 diabetes. However, her father's profession as a commercial director opened the doors to her entry into the entertainment industry. Dana embarked on her journey by starring in a series of advertisements, and this was only the beginning. Her presence graced the screens of various television programs, leaving an indelible mark on shows like Mork and Mindy, Fallen Angel, and Magnum P.I. Yet, it was in the realm of animation that Dana truly found her voice. Her vocal talents gave life to an array of animated characters in beloved cartoons such as Pound Puppies, Rugrats, Goof Troop, and Darkwing Duck. In her youthful ascent, Dana was a sought-after talent, leaving her mark as a rising star. But among her many roles, one truly shines. She is perhaps best remembered for stepping into the shoes of Audrey Griswold in National Lampoon's European Vacation a role she assumed from Dana Barron, who had portrayed Audrey in National Lampoon's Vacation a few years earlier. Sadly, Dana's life and career were both tragically cut short. On July 15, 1996, at the tender age of 32, she suffered a fatal stroke, a complication of her diabetes. The world lost a bright star, but her memory lives on in the characters she brought to life and the laughter she shared with her audiences. Rowdy Roddy Piper Rowdy Roddy Piper, a name synonymous with professional wrestling, catapulted to fame partly thanks to an epic rivalry with Hulk Hogan that captured the hearts of audiences throughout the 80s. This feud played a pivotal role in bringing wrestling to a broader and ever-expanding audience. However, Piper wasn't confined to the wrestling ring alone, he boldly ventured onto the silver screen. His most iconic moment came in the 1988 cult classic, They Live. In this John Carpenter masterpiece, Piper assumed the leading role, portraying a one-man army against a clandestine alien invasion. It was here that he uttered the unforgettable catchphrase that still echoes in our minds. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum. This bone-crutching performance set the stage for a thriving Hollywood career. 
Piper immersed himself in a world of B-movies and left an indelible mark with his appearances in television shows like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Whether in the ring or on the screen, Piper poured his heart and soul into every performance. Even in the most forgettable of projects, he emerged as the most unforgettable element. Sadly, Piper's journey came to an end in 2015. He passed away peacefully in his sleep, the result of a pulmonary embolism that triggered a heart attack. Although he's no longer with us, his legacy lives on in the ring, on the screen, and in the hearts of those who admired his passion, charisma, and unwavering dedication.